I wanted to talk about something that I think is applicable in everybody's life. It's complacency, right? You always hear complacency kills, and it's something that you know we we talk about uh, in the F sixteen uh, manual, if you will, because that's the one manual I have read. I, I took it out because it, it's quoted as complacency is a sense of well being, often while unaware of potential danger, and usually complacency hits when you're tired or when you've been doing a routine task over and over and over, i.e. you've gotten experience, right? Where do they say when, when you're most dangerous, when you've reached that 100 to 200 hours in the aircraft and you think you know what you're doing and you start to, to take routine tasks for granted? And this doesn't just apply to aviation, but racing cars, law enforcement, first responders, any of that stuff, it always applies. So Gonky, what is your take? Like, how did you, you, you dealt with students a lot. How would you get them aware of the dangers of complacency and how not to be complacent? Honestly, um, in my experience as an instructor, I found that new students almost never suffered from complacency because they, everything was new, uh, relatively speaking. A lot of things were new and they were under pressure uh, and they would usually perform where I saw, uh, complacency more often was like, you'd have a senior guy coming back through just to get a rehack. Cause he's got thousands of hours of doing it his way. That experience, uh, would cause them to be complacent in some areas. So, you know, generally speaking, like you catch it. Right. But, uh, but no, the young guys, I, I, I can't think of one time where uh any of the students that i taught were complacent on anything usually like i said it was the it was the more senior guys coming through you know it's complacency i think is that you know the human body is always trying to operate like the brain's always trying to put things in in uh automatic mode and i just think if you have a lot of experience like you said if you've done a task over and over repetitive like it's 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 a you know you can drive uh, eat an ice cream cone and talk on the phone at the same time because your body has basically automated a lot of tasks right but if you're a new driver you can't right you're totally focused on keeping it between the yeah. lines same thing so yeah and you see this in aviation mishaps you know i've done a lot of aib you know reports where complacency not just within the mishap pilot but sometimes complacency with their leadership right where they're making decisions and going well we've always flown in this kind of weather it should be fine uh or i think another big one is the airlines right because what is what is a profession that has a lot of automated routine tasks where you do them over and over and over again and you're you're lulled into this sense you know we we have been very fortunate in the united states especially you know, when's the last fatality? Well, the Southwest mishap where, you know, that was just a catastrophic event. But even before that, you know, the miracle of the Hudson, not a fatality. Things went well. But we've had a very long period of safety, which is good, but also can lull people into the sense of, well, this is just routine when aviation is anything but routine. Aviation yep. is inherently dangerous just by the fact that we're doing something that humans were never meant to do. We mitigate those risks, but you it's can never dynamic, mitigate everything. Yeah, yes. it's a dynamic environment. And it's always changing, right? It's yeah, and it just takes, like you talked about, you know, especially with FMCs, you know, the, the, the computer, it just takes fat fingering one number <laughs> and you don't realize it. <laughs> yep. You know, it just, it, just takes, it just takes that one little misstep and all of a sudden... You're taking off with takeoff and landing data for a runway that's 4,000 feet shorter than what you're actually on, or you're, you're on yep. the wrong runway, or you you did something. So how do we battle this? Well, one of the things is you have to not, you have to recognize it, which is very tough to do. I think, you know, it's it's like hypoxia, right? The, the, the most difficult one to recognize, you know, is where you're not completely um, out to lunch. You're not completely... Right uh, debilitated because, you know, right. you, you actually are still trying to function. And yep. this is especially because you've done it. You've got this sense of, Hey, everything's going great. Well, checklist discipline, that's one way to mitigate it. Uh, communication, SOP. if it, yeah, SOP communication, talking, whether people misunderstand crew and cockpit resource management, they think that that's only for heavies fighters probably do it more. 
that it, every sortie is that's why especially in the air force one and three are your your flight lead and your element lead and you say hey back me up however anybody in the formation can sing up if there's something dumb dangerous or different at any time and that communication keeps us honest Remember there's no, I said rank, in the previous there's no episode, rank in the air right no rank in the air no rank in the debrief at least yeah. not in the air force it, it you it goes back to the planning phase you know it starts with a good brief mission plan but then in the air everybody's got a voice because we're a team operating towards one goal yep. and it's not and i think that's what sets us apart from some other countries where you know it's about honor and it's about well i don't want to be shamed and all this stuff our goal is to learn get better and uh, accomplish the mission so complacency is one of those things that will prevent us from co accomplishing that mission whether it's flying a fighter or in law enforcement that's a big killer in law enforcement is complacency you know you don't watch their hands you're not positioning yourself there was a video i watched I, I like to watch the police you know police activity and stuff like that well there was a video where a guy rolls up on a suspected u-haul uh vehicle and just gets out and he thinks it's stolen suspected stolen u-haul vehicle and he starts talking to the guy he's like hey come on over to my unit let's talk this guy's suspected of stealing this u-haul right he's and the, the cops by himself and he starts talking to the guy and then he's like okay hey bring me another unit so he's talking into his mic well what's he what happens while he's talking to his mic the guy goes for his gun and that becomes a struggle that ends up in the mcdonald's parking lot next door and many shots shot through the window and by the grace of god nothing bad happened to any bystanders or the cop or anything like that but it's complacency that puts us in these situations where we forget our training or go, well, it's not going to happen to me, and we're lulled in the sense of everything is fine. You have to be on edge a little bit no matter what you do in in these situations, even flying an airliner, because if you're not, you may miss something. Yeah, it's like never had a real V1 cut, but we might have one today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you get ready exactly. for it. <laughs> I always think about that. You know, I look down at the end of the runway. I'm like, look long, man. Keep it going straight. I mean, because yeah. if I mean, if if you're just caught sitting on your hands, you know, stuff like that will kill you. And for those at home, a V1 cut is a rejected takeoff, right? Or, high speed. Or <laughs> something happens uh, at a higher speed where you have to decide whether I'm going to take this aircraft flying or I'm going to reject the takeoff. And whether that's in a fighter, you know, I mean, <laughs> complacency kills in G. You know, oh, well, you know, I've been pulling nine Gs yep. all week. I'm good. I don't, I don't need to worry about the G strain. I don't need to go to the GX and, and pay attention to it. I'm just going to pay lip service to it. Right. And then the first thing you do, the nine G bat turn your lights out. You know, it's that kind of complacency, whether it's safety related or tactically where, you know, you, you get complacent about, um, where the friendly troops are, you know, you get, Oh, well, they're always here. I'm used to the, you know, it's, it's, it's that sense of everything's fine. This time it'll be fine too, versus I need to confirm I need to I need to stick to the procedures and not let myself go down that route. It's hard. That's probably one of the toughest things to do, especially as you get more experience. Yep. I agree. Douglas, as our psychological expert, you've got anything to add for this one? Well, I was thinking about that while you were talking and you kept stealing everything I was going to say. So nice job. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was very well done. Well, I mean that I mean that as a compliment. I got a PhD Perfect. in stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, so. you emphasize the group nature of it and the cultural aspect. If, if you're in a culture and I, I, I use the word culture to mean any group that you're, you're existing in tactically, socially, whatever. Um, if you're in a group that everybody thinks it's cool to not follow procedure and not follow SOP and, you know, we're, we're tough guys. We don't need to do it the right way. You're in danger that yeah. the, the group attitude and the group approach to it is, is really critical. And, um, that does something you emphasized a couple of times. That's, that's a, a really familiar aspect to anybody who's studied it from that angle. Normalization but, of deviance. That's normalization a, that's a, of deviance. That is the phrase. And you see yeah, it so many places. Um, yeah. oh. I was reading, I was doing some research on it in engineering recently of all places. Wow. Well, I yep. mean, there, can happen we anywhere. just talked about a, a, an ocean gate submarine. I mean, that's a normalization of deviance. That's very a very good example. Hey, 